This whole field of happiness research has, has really grown, and many countries are now measuring Beyond, going beyond measuring the GDP or the, the economy right, right. and, I want to and talk measuring about that. these other factors. So I want to talk about that because I remember seeing Ben Bernanke a lot long ago saying we have got to look at more than just money to measure right. GDP. Right. Which I, I just, it blew my mind. This is Ben Bernanke. He right. was the guy in 1999 that was probably dissenting to your book, Affluenza. Maybe not, but certainly would, would have had some views that might have been contrary. How did well, that it was happen? mostly Summers and Rubin and, and Greenspan and, okay. and uh, Geithner, you know, okay. who are, uh, were more more prominent, and they mm -hmm. they haven't changed their views. But Ben mm -hmm. Bernanke has adjusted. Okay, and so mm -hmm. how did that happen? So how do you get Ben Bernanke, this this econ guy, this finance guy, and quite a leader in his field in, in these uh, factors? How does he change his mind, and how does he buy that? There's something more than money. How does he buy that there's a, there should be a gross domestic happiness policy? I think the evidence is just becoming too clear to ignore. And many top economists like Joseph Stiglitz mm -hmm. and Jeffrey Sachs and others mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. have concluded mm -hmm. uh, this uh, around the world. Other countries are saying we got to do this. The UK is measuring well-being and far, going far beyond GDP. Australia, France, Canada has a Canadian index of well-being. So they're, they're mm -hmm. looking at. So I think we can't completely be out of the picture. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we were the first to call attention to this, even before the King of Bhutan. It mm -hmm. was Robert Kennedy in his presidential campaign mm -hmm. of 1968 who first said that the GDP, the gross, uh, mm -hmm. gross domestic product, or in, mm -hmm. in those days the, the gross national product, mm -hmm. measures all the wrong things. It doesn't tell us how well we're doing. Mm -hmm. It counts all these negatives. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he talked about the pollution with asbestos of Lake Superior. He talked about... Mm -hmm the crime rate, he talked about the illness rate, that all of these things and the cost we spend to take care of them make the GDP or G GNP go up. Mm -hmm. Now all these other important things like our social connection, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the quality of our education. So why aren't we measuring, why weren't we measuring? Why I understand that we need to measure fi financial and Ben Bernanke and, and Summers and so forth, but so, so and, he, and Kennedy was on to this, but mm -hmm. so, so why has it taken us this long to address these factors? I think there are a lot of entrenched interests who mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. necessarily want this conversation to occur. Is it harder to, to measure occur. too? It's yeah, a it's little a little. Bit, maybe? Yeah, it mm -hmm. is a little harder to okay. measure, mm -hmm. but uh, you know. But they haven't done a great job. Forgive me to, no. to whomever, but they haven't done such a great job measuring the economy either, right? Or the no, predictions or certainly have. They not, certainly haven't predicted right, 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 very right. well mm -hmm. what would happen. Mm -hmm. You know, GDP is fairly easy because basically it's a very simple measure. It's the the total market value of all the goods and services that are produced mm -hmm. in the economy mm -hmm, in a mm -hmm. given year. Mm -hmm. And that's the ones that are for sale. Mm -hmm. So housework doesn't count. Right, and it's nice we and macro. A lot of yeah, it, and who's measuring? Count. So how do you measure that kind of stuff? How do you measure social connection? How do you measure how do how does happiness initiative your your, your, your the work that you're doing and and your research is and who who where do you get this data from? Well, there are two things here. We uh, right now, we're coming to think of the concept of well-being and happiness as being uh, similar but not synonymous. So mm, okay. when we talk of well-being, this is at, at, from the meetings that I was in with, with people from around the world in Bhutan. Uh, when we talk about well-being, we are m thinking about these object this objective data to measure okay. these things. Okay. So if, okay. if we think of these categories, sure. let's take health as a mm -hmm. category, mm -hmm. then life expectancy mm -hmm. or uh, which are very objective. They're, these they're are very measurable, objective. very measurable. Obesity, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. those kind mm -hmm. of things. If you take uh, time balance, you can look at work hours mm -hmm. and leisure mm -hmm. time. You can look okay. at you know over number mm -hmm. of people in. But how do you measure, pers I, that makes sense, yeah. but then there's this pursuit of happiness that we so try to understand here, different. right? Mm -hmm. Happiness is people's perception, mm -hmm. their subjective perception of how they're doing mm -hmm. in these areas of life. Mm -hmm. So the kinds of questions you ask about health are, how do you feel about your health? I mm -hmm. feel like my health is mm -hmm. excellent, it's good, it's fair. I feel like um, I can do all the things I need to do without suffering too much pain or I feel like I'm in a lot of pain it keeps me mm -hmm. from from doing or I things. trust my government or not that's 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 subjective truly. that's a subjective or my neighbors or right. I worry about this or that okay. exactly mm -hmm. so ha happiness survey which we're involved with in the happiness initiatives mm -hmm. measures these subjective responses okay and any in our view any sensible government uh, body mm -hmm. uh, looking at making policy needs to do both 
-hmm. that clearly they need all the objective data. So they need you? to know. Absolutely they do. But, yeah. but I'm, I'm predicting or, or anticipating what some might say. It's maybe what I'm saying. Who, who are, you, are you studying students in colleges? I mean, are, are, they, are they the survey respondents or where do they come from? Oh, well, we, we anyone, that, the survey at happycounts.org, which is the, the, a survey that takes about 15 minutes. That's right, it's cover, right online. Yeah, mm -hmm, covers mm -hmm. the, the 10 items, can be taken by anybody. That's you right. just go mm -hmm, online mm -hmm. and you get an instant mm -hmm. response when you finish the survey that tells you how well you're doing. And this is at happy.org? Happy counts. Happycounts.org is where you can take a look at the survey. I remember right, this. Right, right. So we've, we've surveyed now with two surveys, we had a longer one first, now we have a shorter one, mm -hmm. altogether over 40,000 people. Wow. So we have a, a good database. Absolutely. We've also had a special focus on colleges mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because it's kind of a fun event for college students to sure. do as mm -hmm. a school, see how well they're doing and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so forth. But okay, we've also enough. focused on communities. And, and, and many, and I think you'd shared with me that there's how many different languages that, that you at last count, I think it's there. It's it's been translated into about eight foreign languages. I, mm -hmm. Don't hold me mm -hmm. on that one, mm -hmm. but that it's so we we have it in in, and and that happened because of the city That's of important. Seattle. The city of Seattle mm -hmm. wanted their immigrant populations mm -hmm. to be able to take the survey. So it's mm -hmm. the primary immigrant languages in the city of Seattle, which may not necessarily be the same, but they are. Okay. So Somali, for example, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. it in Somali, mm -hmm. and I know mm -hmm. Burnsville. We have quite a bit in Minnesota. A, yeah, yes, quite a yes. few mm -hmm. true Somalis here. We mm -hmm. have it in Oromo, which is an Ethiopian, the mm -hmm. kind of main mm -hmm. language. We have it in, obviously, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. We have it in Russian. We so have, you're getting you know, pretty granular, then. This is not only subjective data, but it's also granular subjective data across different populations and are you seeing differences I, I know you've we're some. absolutely mm -hmm. seeing differences so in Seattle we received money from the State Department uh, the City Department of Neighborhoods mm -hmm. to do test uh, surveys with four immigrant populations mm -hmm. Filipino Somali Ethiopian and Vietnamese mm, okay and so we worked with community leaders uh, for each of these groups in mm -hmm. order to get up to about 200 immigrants to take the survey from okay. each group Got it. and in their language. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at the scores mm -hmm. and we found that the scores were much, much lower than the average Interesting. Uh, scores Interesting, so there's for a, Seattle. a real difference. And this is, it, just if you could quick explain, um, and, and I, I want to explain it because this is what we're, we're looking at in Burnsville, in Burnsville is a suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, at looking at doing this happiness survey and happiness initiative. And what you do is rather than a bunch of researchers coming in in white coats, although you do have scientists working with you, you're actually having the citizens and citizen leaders get involved. But not only this city council or doctors, it's also citizen groups, right? Yeah, citizen mm -hmm. groups. So this, you know, sometimes works better than right, right. in some situations than in others. Them, I'm sure. A lot of it mm -hmm. depends on having an active leader mm -hmm. in a community mm -hmm. who, who is really excited about this. So we did four things, and they all worked fairly well, and we got good data from all four. Okay. But the, the only one that really used the data and got people very actively involved in the community was the Vietnamese Friendship Association. Okay. And uh, the others had little meetings, mm -hmm. but I, would, I don't want to pretend that these were as successful. But the, mm -hmm. but the Vietnamese Fr Friendship Association town meeting around and was motivated this, and, and was excited motivated. about it. 200 and people some, from the community energies. showed up. Mm -hmm. They uh, were concerned about issues like um, people's and mistrust of government. And they liked the outcomes, or like they, they liked yeah. the information I, they I think did. you shared. The outcomes they were, were telling, and yet, and yeah. I want to get at that a little bit, because that's, that's really what We the P is about, and w we want to support people like you and citizens like them who have passions and interests and motivations, and I think we do as well. I think a country does in many, all different sectors and, and types of people. So tell us a little bit about um, what you see that groups like We the P and citizen groups can do to support more of this sort of research and to make, be sure that we're getting more granular, more detail uh, research than just the number of uh, dollars we have or, or not yeah. in our federal bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's a couple things that need to, I think, I think um, at the, at the, the funding is, is key, mm -hmm. uh, I think, somehow we have to interest foundations to a greater degree and communities mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this kind of research and work. Mm -hmm. We haven't tricky. been very good at that. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it us less able, we can get all the data, but it makes us less mm -hmm. able to really break the data down and analyze the mm -hmm. data because that so requires So it needs to be valued work. in a way that, that fund, funders are willing to 
to make right. commitments to support so, it. Because mm -hmm. if we can break it down to all the individual questions, mm -hmm. all the demographics, which we, we have, a, you know, mm -hmm. everything from gender and ethnic mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. and age and income, mm -hmm. we have all of it. So we can really look and say, how are these little segments of a community doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do they answer specific questions? Why does a funder care? Why, why do foundations care? Why do uh, we, the P, in fact, is is a for-profit company? Why would why would uh, a stakeholder or I'm sorry, shareholder care about what's happening in, in various different communities? Why does it matter? Well, it matters because we really need this kind of information to tell us whether our policies or our community activities and stuff are making people feel better about their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the goal. We're we getting are, anywhere. We live in a country whose supposedly was founded on the principle mm -hmm. of the pursuit of happiness, mm -hmm. whose uh, four most prominent so-called founding fathers, and, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that it's uh, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin, mm -hmm. all said on many occasions that the real purpose of government, in fact, for Jefferson, the sole orthodox purpose of government mm -hmm. is increasing the happiness of its citizens. Mm -hmm.